everybody, this is Annie, founder of Luxury Groomer, and today I'm here with Dr. Alex Schechter from Pure Paws in Hell's Kitchen and his dog, Sai. We just got done grooming uh, Sai here in the home, Dr. Alex's home, and <laughs> I'm a little tongue-in-cheek because today I thought it would be a good time to talk about some eye health when it's groom related to grooming and in general, and he happens to, Sai happens to have only one eye. Can you tell us about Sai's one eye? Yeah, so so Sai, short for Cyclops. Um, we got him when he was eight weeks old and he got an eye infection when, before we got him and it, and it went through the eye and, uh, and so it had to be removed. So, you know, we always, me and my wife always joke about we have to protect the eye. So, so we're, we're very cautious with size one eye. Yeah, and when we do the grooming, this, this happens often, dogs with one eye. When we do the grooming, we have different ways of trying to eat. Some people want to hide it and some people would rather it be short so that it's clean. So we do whatever, but... He definitely doesn't seem uh, very affected by it as he's falling asleep right now. <laughs> so there's a couple of commonly asked questions that I thought we could address today when it comes to eye stuff. The biggest one and the first one I thought we could cover is tear staining. And so first of all, let's find out what it is and why it happens. Yeah, so, so tear staining is basically when you have an excess amount of tears that basically get onto the fur and what it causes is that fur to change color to brown. Um, and so you may see when you look at a dog, little brown staining on the insides of, of both of, of his or her eyes. Um, similar to, to saliva staining or lick staining when you see it on their paws. Um, same thing happens with any type of, of uh, uh, wet, wet uh, material, so licking your tears on, on the surface of, uh, of fur. Yeah, so as a groomer, I'm constantly asked what we can do about that. So there's two issues to address. There's the color of it that people don't like. And then sometimes if it's constantly wet so much, there's some skin irritation underneath and there's a smell, um, an unpleasant smell. So first and foremost, I tell people to just stay on top of it at home every day. It needs to be cleaned at home. And there's a few different products out there that work. Um, we've talked about this before. There's products out there that go on the food and there's products that go on um, the, the staining itself. I tend to recommend the ones that go on the staining itself, the ones on the food. You know, anything you're ingesting into the body, a lot of them are minor antibiotics. Some of them may have other some ingredients in them. My personal opinion is you don't want to go that route. And the stuff topically can work pretty well. It just has to be done constantly. One of those things that uh, I tell people to use at home is something like contact lens solution. You knew of another product as well that you mentioned earlier that's similar to that, right? Yeah, it's, it's called the Genteel Severe. It's, it's over the counter. Uh, humans use it for dry eye basically and so it's, it's super safe and, and so you can also use that to clean those areas and not have to worry about if it gets in the eye causing any more irritation. Yeah, and there was a particular eye gel out there called Veteracin that you can look into. I've had people have luck with it and you know the vets have looked at the ingredients and it seems safe and healthy and all that good stuff. We uh, at Luxury Groomer have a face wash shampoo that we offer as a service. Uh, it has a little bit of a brightener in it, so over time with regular loose it, uh, use, it can lighten up a little bit. Not a miracle worker. It has to be done at home every day. That's just maintenance level um, that it takes to really see an improvement. But that kind of thing also helps. It's formulated to soothe the skin underneath. If they're staying wet that much and they're actually irritated underneath, that's part of the issue you definitely want to take care of because it becomes not an aesthetic issue but a medical issue. So the next thing that uh, I want to talk about is tearless shampoos. So a lot of people don't necessarily know what that means. The word's sort of thrown around quite a bit. When we're grooming, no matter what the shampoo is, we try to keep it out of the eyes just because it's just better to do that. Um, but we do that, you know, if you feel like they've gotten shampoo in the eyes, we'll rinse it out and we also use a saline flush if we feel like we didn't get it all out or we just want to be safe. But can you explain kind of what tearless shampoo is, what it means? Yeah, it's, it's more of just a, mar it's more of like a marketing ploy to say, hey, a less irritating or somewhat safe shampoo, or if it gets in the eye, it's not gonna cause a, a large amount of irritation. Similar, if you're in the shower and you get some shampoo in your eye, that, that kind of burning sensation versus tearless shampoo or baby shampoo, it's supposed to, to, to not cause that irritation. But in, in any type of situation, anything in the eye that's not supposed to be there is gonna cause some degree of irritation. So that's why it's really important if anything gets in or if you go you know, uh, to any groomer that, that they have the capabilities to, to flush out the eyes after um, in case any shampoo gets in. Yeah, one of the signs we look for is if they start just kind of doing a subtle wink or something like that, which 
there would be nothing, but as soon as we see it, we'll just in case, flush it out because we don't want something, they can't talk to us, so that we don't want something sitting in there and then it's too late, it's been there a couple hours before mom or dad sees it and you know, that kind of thing. The other thing that I wanted to mention is while we're grooming, we've got your hands on your dog, we're right close to their face doing some hand scissor work. And so we look at the eyes, maybe a little closer than sometimes you get a chance to. And we see something that doesn't look quite right, we bring attention to the owner or a vet if it's appropriate, and the owner can speak to their vet and vice versa. Can you tell us, even for the owners at home, what would be some major things that you could see as a, as a layman that would be like, I need to go see the vet? Yeah, so 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 my dog, because we're so careful with that one eye, we've actually so so what they can do is they can have tiny little hairs growing on on their eyelids the wrong way. So instead of growing out, they can grow up or actually inside the eye, and that's causing irritation. And what you can do is you can kind of pluck them out if needed to help um, to help with that eye to help with that irritation. So what you can do is if you can take a look and you can even just see and make sure that all the eyelashes are are growing the way they should. Or even, is there any, you know, for a lot of these smush-faced dogs, um, um, French bulldogs, or, or um, um, if they have skin folds, then make sure that those folds aren't pressing up against the eye, or that there's not fur pressing in that eye, because that's going to cause some irritation, and, and sometimes that needs to be addressed medically. Um, other things, if, you're, uh, if your dog's eye, if you notice any brown pigment on, on their cornea, um, any red irritation on the whites of their eye, all things to... Uh, to bring to, to, to a veterinarian's attention, and uh, if you notice those things, definitely give them Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not rocket science. Anything that doesn't look like it should be there, it's probably yeah. reason to just go ahead yeah. and get checked out. Anything that doesn't look like your eye, yeah. so dogs are very similar, so it should look, look the same, so. Yeah, very, very good. Well, thank you so much yeah, for letting us hang out in your home after size grooming. He's conked out on the floor over here. Uh, home grooming <laughs> tends to be quite relaxing, yes. and so he's taking a nap. But thank you so much for the information, and. Yeah. I'm gonna leave some links to look below for uh, Pure Paws and Health Kitchen if you're a New Yorker and would like to see Dr. Alex. Um, and maybe some links to some sources for eye health or uh, you know, ask any other questions down in the comments that you want answered. I feel like we've kind of covered it, but I could be wrong and I'll definitely answer your questions or I'll ask Dr. Alex to answer the questions in the comments below. Have a great time, thanks for listening.